Welcome back, folks. Jason here to walk you through stroke effects in Illustrator. How do we get wavy lines, rough lines, jagged lines? Well, they are all effects in Illustrator. I have some basic shapes that I've drawn that have a stroke around them, and they can be a line with a stroke or a shape with a stroke. And if I would like to get this wavy line effect, I'm going to select my object with the selection tool, go under the effect menu, distort and transform. These are the very common ones. I'm going to go to zigzag. It's going to call up my options and I can control whether I have smooth or round corners on my zigzag. So once I apply the size and my smooth or corner points, I can click OK. And there is my shape with this zigzag or this waviness applied to it. If I want to go back and edit and change into the attributes of this effect, it's very common that people will go back under the effect menu, go back under distort and transform, and choose zigzag again. I will get this warning dialog box that says you are going to apply another instance, which means you're going to double up this instance. You're going to get two sets of zigzag here. And here it says to edit the current effect, double click. If you apply a new effect, you are then going to double up the effects and then you're not going to know what's happening. So I'm going to click cancel and I'm going to go over to my appearance panel, which you can find under the window menu under appearance. With my object selected, I have the ability to go in here and work with my stroke. Under the appearance panel, I have the ability to work with my stroke, which I'm going to open up by clicking on the twirly. And you can see I have the zigzag effect on my selected object. I can turn on and turn off that effect because it's simply an effect. It doesn't really make the line that shape. To edit my selected shape, I open up the stroke. I click on the zigzag to edit it. Make sure your preview is checked and I can go in and I can change the attributes of this zigzag right here. Now, if I have gone in under the effect menu and I have doubled up and reapplied another effect on top of this, say distort and transform and then roughen, and it will allow me to apply this, what it's doing is it's applying another effect on top of my zigzag. And you'll be able to see that here with both my roughen and my zigzag. If I turn off my roughen, there's my zigzag all by itself. If I turn off the zigzag by poking, poking it in the eye, there is my roughen all by itself. So when you reapply another effect, they will double up and affect each other. Once you turn that effect off, it's off, but it's still there. If you'd like to delete that effect, highlight it like it is in blue, click on the trash can icon on the lower right hand side of the appearance panel, and that effect is gone. So quite simply, you select a stroke, go under the effect menu, and any effect that you'd like to reapply you'll notice that under the effect menu, the very last one that you chose is there at the top. And it's going to reapply that amount of roughen or wave or stroke um, effect that you want. And there it is. Now, for some reason, it puts it up here. It's not in the stroke anymore, but it's still going to affect the entire shape. So when I click on this, again, I can control the roughen amount on this just like so. Easy. Same thing can happen with a line. It can be an open shape or a closed shape, doesn't matter. Again, choose your effect, distort and transform. And here I'll try, and I may try twist. So here with twist, I can go in and I can twist my line a bit and get that effect to kind of warp that. Now this is not a perfect, you can see it leaves a little bit lumps here. So it's not the perfect way of going in and actually creating flowing lines, but it can work pretty good if you would like to twist an object. And again, there is my editable twist effect there in my appearance panel. So I can easily apply an effect to any type of stroke here. But what starts to become interesting is this ridges per segment issue. And if I go in and apply a zigzag effect to my circle, and I'm gonna do a smooth, I get this kind of wavy waffle effect. Now. When we call this up, one of the things here is the ridges per segment. And what is a segment? Well, a segment is basically any portion of the shape that you've drawn that's basically connected with points. And a circle here basically is four arcs from point to point. If I go to my direct selection tool, you'll be able to see that this is a segment, this is a segment, 
this is a segment, and this is a segment. So the number of bumps or you know, effects per segment is controlled that way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my scissor tool, which is the letter C, and I'm going to cut one of these segments by going over and clicking on the path, and I'm going to cut that shape. You'll notice once I do, it bunches up my entire effect. And the reason why is because I have just gone in and I've added a segment in here, and these segments, by adding this point in here, you can see now that it bunches it all up. Because when we are working with the effect here, the ridges per segment say that there's four ridges per segment. Well, if you have a short segment and a long, long segment, it will still give you that number of ridges per segment. So that's something to pay attention to when you're working with shapes like this with different length lines. And to prove that, I'm going to draw another line here, and I'm going to put a zigzag effect on this. Distort, zigzag, and there is my line. I'm going to draw another line right below it and a shorter line, and I'm going to reapply that exact same effect by going under effect and applying that zigzag, and I get a much different effect because the ridges per segment are going to space out between the entire segment. This is a segment, and this is a segment. So the longer and the shorter the segments, the more you are going to distort that effect. What you're seeing here is just an effect. These are not real. If I go into the view menu under outline mode, which is command or control Y, you'll see an outline mode. These are still perfect shapes and lines. But if I go back and use my command or control Y to go to preview, I am seeing these effects. Now, if I would like to edit these shapes or these paths here, and I'd like to edit this line right here, I really can't because it's not really that line. It's only an effect. It only appears that way. So in order to be able to go in and edit this line and actually make this line a wavy line, you're going to need to go in and you're going to need to select the line and you have to go onto the object menu. And what you want to do is you want to expand the appearance. Now this just appears to be a wavy line. It isn't. But if you truly want this to be a wavy line, you're going to have to select that, and then you're going to choose Expand the Appearance. When you expand the appearance, and I go into Outline Mode, now that line is actually the way it looks. Remember, this is just an appearance. In effect, it is not real. I cannot edit the curvature of this line with the line itself until I go in to the Object menu, and I actually say, Take the appearance of this wavy line, expand it so it actually becomes a wavy line. One very important thing is understanding the expand appearance and outline stroke and the expand commands. Check out my other video and I'll put the link in the description to expand, expand appearance and outline because that is super important to understand when you're working with these type of effects.